This is section 8.2, this is part three. We are simplifying radicals. I wanna simplify the square root of 75. So I'm going to do a, a prime factorization of 75. A suggestion is to leave yourself a little bit of space above it because we can sometimes add to these and not have to redo the calculations over and over again. All right, so I see 75 and I want a prime factorization of it. So I wanna find a prime number that divides evenly into 75. It ends in a five, so I divide it by five. 75 divided by five is 15. And then five goes into 15 again, leaving you with a three. Now I tend to stick with the same number as long as I can just because it makes it easier to pair them up, but you're going to end up with the same numbers no matter what. So if you've done five and then three and then five again, it's going to be okay. I'm looking for a square root, which means my index is two. That means I'm looking for pairs. I have a pair of fives and I have a three without a pair. So this tells me the square root of 75 is going to be a five comes on the outside the three doesn't have a pair, so it is stuck on the inside. So I should get five times the square root of three. And even though you cannot rely on these calculators every time, because sometimes they won't work, it is worth a second to see if it does work for that particular one to double check yourself. And we are correct. Okay, so let's try to simplify the square root of 145. So let's find the prime factorization of 145. Well, 145 is divisible by five because it ends in a five. And if I go do that calculation, I get that it is 29. 29 is also a prime number. So this is the um, prime factorization. I'm looking for a square root, so I'm looking for pairs, but I don't have any pairs. The square root of 145 does not simplify. There's no pairs in there, I can't do anything. So let's try the square root, uh, the negative square root of 700. A negative on the outside means a negative over here. And then we don't have to think about that anymore. We've already taken care of the sign. So 700 is quite a, a bit bigger than the others. So I wanna do a prime factorization of 700. Well, the first thing I notice is that it's divisible by seven and seven is a prime number. So I'm gonna divide by seven and then get something nice, 100, okay? Um, 100 is even number, you can divide by two. And that gives you 50. And then you can divide by two again. And that gives you 25. And then that one's divisible by five and you get five. So here is my prime factorization, seven times two times two times five times five. Now I'm looking for a, a square root, right? So I'm looking for a pair, it's understood two here. I have a pair of twos, I have another pair of fives. So a two comes on the outside, a five comes on the outside. And just like for this one, I multiply these two back together because they didn't have pairs. When you have more than one pair, they do get multiplied together on the outside as well. So this is 10 times the square root of, the only thing that didn't have a pair is seven. So the square root of 700 is 10 times the square root of seven. So negative 10 square root seven. Negative square root 700, negative 10 square root seven. Okay, so let's look at this one, it's much, much bigger. The square root of 100,800. 
All right, much bigger. And if you try it on the calculator, it goes directly to the decimal approximation. It's too big for your calculator to simplify. So this is what I mean. You're gonna have some where they must be done by hand. Okay, so. I wanna do the prime factorization of that. Well, um, it's, it ends in zero, so let's divide it by five. If you divide that by five, you get 20,160. Still ends in zero, so it's still divisible by five, so I divide it by five again, and I get 4,032. So it's no longer divisible by five because it ends in two, but it is even, so it's divisible by two. So let's deal with the twos for a while. Divide that by two, and you get 2016, which is again divisible by two, 1008, which is again divisible by two, 504, and two again, 252, and two again, 160, uh, 126, sorry. And then 63. Okay, so not divisible by two anymore. 63 is seven times nine. So seven, nine, and nine is three times three. Okay, so that's a lot. Let's see what the square root of 100,800 is going to equal to. I'm looking for a square root, so look for pairs. That's a pair, 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 and a pair. The only thing that's left inside is the seven. That's the only thing that didn't have a pair. So I'm gonna have to figure out five times two, times two, times two, times three. For every pair, one of them comes out. 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is 120. So this is 120 times the square root of 7.